What is going on everyone? It's Kelly here and we are back to the Chicken Chronicles of my YouTube channel. Now, if you guys watched my past chicken videos, I did have a large wooden coop right here, which is not here anymore. We are going to grow back this grass. Gabe's mom and dad actually came and picked up the chicken coop. Listen, they, these chickens have no personal space whatsoever. So I've come into a problem. One, there's chicken poop everywhere, which is a given. I know that was going to happen. But these chickens love to scratch, especially right here where we enter the patio. So it was a little bit like dirt right here. But all of this used to be grass. And now it's dirt because you guys like to mess it all up. Yep. So I've officially made the decision that my chickens are going to go to chicken jail. I bought this huge pin that I'm actually going to section off a part of the yard. Right now it's on the back patio. It came in three boxes. I unpacked one of the boxes, which is just like big stainless steel, like rods piping, I guess I could say. And it comes with a chicken wire and I still have to open the other two boxes. So it's going to take me a couple days to build this just because I like to like work on this a little bit, then I work on that for a little bit, and then I work on this for a little bit. I cannot sit down and like complete one project at a time. So it's gonna take a couple days, maybe even a week to do, um, but it's going to be a process. So stay tuned and we're gonna get to building. Yep, you guys are gonna have a, a little home over there. Yep, yes you. Before we get to building this chicken pen, I'd like to say that this video is sponsored by Bespoke. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club that delivers awesome boxes of top shelf products by under the radar brands. One of my favorite thing about Bespoke Post is that 90% of the products are purchased from small companies, which most are in the United States. For example, the Terra Box knife is made by Bare Bones in Salt Lake City. And another U.S. brand based company is the Forge Steel Knife, which is made by Buck and Bear in Pennsylvania. So let's get to opening my bespoke box. Now a cool thing about having the box subscription is you can preview your box. So if you like it, you can keep it. If you don't like it, you can exchange it for another box. Or if you just don't want a box that month, you can cancel it free of charge. First little box, open it up. We have the Forge Knife, which is going to come in handy for this weekend when we go hog hunting. Check this out. And it even comes with a leather sleeve. And that's a heavy duty knife right there. It's got a really cool design. This is the forge knife. Even if you don't hunt and you like to have a knife on handy, you can cut rope, you can even cut an orange with it. You know, you can do anything with knives. You can never have enough knives. Speaking of you can never have enough knives, check out the chop kit. Wow, this is probably one of my favorite boxes because I do a lot of chopping. As you guys know, I love my vegetables and these knives will come super handy for when I go camping. And I plan to go camping very soon. Check this out. When we were in Jamaica a couple months ago, we could have used this knife to chop up stuff. Check, that's actually pretty cool too. It's like a new, a new thing here. Like, I can't wait to use these. We got the chop box. All right, up next is the fueled box. Now, I picked this one because I think I would get some really good use out of it if we're out on the boat, if we're at hunting camp, but like I said, camping. This is the one way I can actually make my morning espresso. Check this out. It actually comes with a little seasoning too, a lumberjack. Ooh, when I opened this box, I could smell the seasoning. It's a very hickory sweet seasoning. We have a mini fuel stove. So like I said, my stove top espresso maker can perfectly fit over this. You can get a little cast iron skillet, make an egg or two for breakfast, or even saute some vegetables that you chop up with your chopping knife, throw a little hog meat in there that you use your foraging knife to clean, like anything. They literally have just an unlimited supply of just cool stuff. 
that can be sent right to your door with bespoke post. If you're anything like me, you like to do some research or like see where your brands come from or what they're made out of, there's also a product page for everything that Bespoke has to offer. Bespoke has hundreds of boxes that you can pick from. You can also take a personalized quiz to figure out what personalized box could be best for you. Oh my gosh, while I was looking at the boxes, I did not see this when I ordered mine, but it is give the caffeine a break in the name of wellness. That's me. I drink coffee every single morning. Check that box out. To get 20% off your first Bespoke Post box, click the link in the description below and use my code KELLY20 to save some cash. Or you can go to bespokepost.com slash kelly20. And now, let's get back to building. I just gotta take all these pieces out. And then there's some other pieces under there. Wire. Oh boy. Here goes nothing. Look at these little raptors over here, just digging up the yard. Um, excuse me. That's my banana tree. What you doing? Hmm? Yeah. You like that booty scratch? <laughs> You're lucky I love you guys. Finally, I finally unwrapped all of these individual pieces. We got some other pieces in the box. It actually doesn't look too hard. It looks like these rods pretty much just go in, boop, and they just pop in. So now I just gotta figure out the puzzle part. And this time I will read directions or instructions. Let's get started. All right, first we're gonna lay out our perimeter. We have our F connector pieces with our two rods. my head's not cut off. Step one, the perimeter is done. This is gonna look pretty good. And once it's done, I can put plants all around it and really start getting creative. Yes, may I help you? <laughs> All right, we are getting there. Um, my fingers, my pinchers are feeling a little sore because if y'all ever use these things before where you have to like pinch them shut and then shove the thing on and it kind of pinches your fingers a little bit every time. Yeah, that's how my fingers feel right now. So it goes here. And then there's going to be another rod that goes up and then up and then up. So it kind of has like the shape of like a barn almost. So we're still going to be able to walk in here, even though these kind of make it look like it ain't that tall, but it is, it is a good size. Y'all chickens better get used to this perimeter. Yep. That's all I'm saying. You guys, I'm going to show you a picture of my banana trees when I very first planted them. I gotta go back on my phone and try to find them, but they were so little. I want to say it's been six months. I will correct that if I need to at the bottom of the screen, but check how huge they are. I mean, the little banana trees that were growing with it were like this big. Now they're legit mini banana trees. Check that out. It was windy the past couple days, so the leaves are a little frayed. These two have surprised me the most. This one was literally this big. Now it's the same size as the big one. How crazy is that? I'm hoping by spring, summer, we get some bananas because they'll almost be in the ground for like about a year now. Um, 
coming early summer, so. I really want to take a break, but I'm not going to. I'm going to push through as much as I can. I want to try to get it done today, honestly. But my brain wants to do like a hundred different things today. I want to like, all right, start this, take a break, go do something else. And I'm like, no, I'm focusing on this. I'm trying to tune in. So here goes nothing. It's looking pretty good if I do say so myself. We got Luke helping, trying his best over here. You gotta pinch these two together. Ready? Here, I'll pinch here. Now push it in slow. There we go, perfect. Perfect. Ow. <laughs> we got Blue Gabe raking up the banana leaves. And Jake over there playing with a dart gun. So for the top ones by myself, I'll put the one end in like that. Walk my hands over here and put this one in. You can definitely build this with one person. Yeah. Yeah. I've been at, I've been at school all day and oh. look how much he done, a lot. Did you hit the, the yeah, reindeer? Can you get my door? Oh. I just shot You shot over the reindeer. So Luke and Jake have been target practicing with I just the blow right darts. I Luke, I think you hit right here. Is that it? No, I had oh. like a green one and I saw it hit the bushes over here. I was standing way over there and I and I went so far that I hit the tree. Like somewhere right here. Oh, well, let me know if you find it. I'm just hoping my chickens don't come running up to me with darts sticking out of them. <laughs> you guys, check out this adorable sign. The fluffy butt hut. I'm gonna slap that baby right on heel. So we're gonna wrap up this day. However, it's not the end of the video just yet. Um, the sun's going down and we're gonna need four, probably four people so we can put this chicken wire on the top. Cause it's kind of a process, um, but we're gonna have to wait a couple days because tomorrow is one of my really good friends, Cheyenne, which a lot of you might know her from my YouTube channel. It's her bachelorette party this weekend. Uh, so we're gonna go do some girl stuff this weekend. <laughs> and Gabe is going to take little Lukey over there, who is, well he was playing on the hammock, but now he's going in the house. And no, he's grabbing the blow gun. Yes. You need a dart? Uh -oh. What are you gonna do? I don't know. Whoa, you gotta get the dart out of the animal. 
Luke sees a squirrel. He's not gonna get it. He's trying to be sneaky. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Ga did I already say this? I forget. Gabe and Luke are going to go. <gasps> oh! <laughs> are gonna go look for shark's teeth over on the west coast of Florida, I believe, in the Peace River. Um, so they'll be doing that. I'll be at the bachelorette party and then we can come back and finish the chicken jail. I'm back from the bachelorette weekend and I did go to the farmer's market in Fort Pierce and got some really cool things. I actually got this big crab metal art piece to put out in the front of the house. I got some eucalyptus for the shower and I bought a lion's mane mushroom. I've always wanted to try lion's mane mushroom, so today's the day we're trying a lion's mane mushroom. But right now Florida is getting a cold front. It was actually really nice today. I'm actually working on this furniture piece right here. It's been a pain in my butt. The top's done. Obviously this part is not. I will never take a piece of wood furniture again and sand it down and try to paint it. I'd rather just buy a new piece, but it was nice earlier, but now it's getting a little chilly. So I'm gonna grab a jacket and I'll see you guys outside. getting the roof on these chickens are getting locked up now i don't think we technically put on the chicken wire exactly how the instructions told us to but we're kind of doing it our own way we cut long strips did a strip down this side strip down that side and we're going to do two strips at the top where they overlap right here but we're gonna get this thing done today. Fingers crossed, there was a huge front moving in, but I think it was literally just a cold front and a bunch of clouds. So hopefully no rains on the radar. What's going on? What is that? Where did that come from? The wild chicken. The wild chicken? Oh, there he is. Oh, look at him over on the... Let's see if I can sneak up on him. What are you doing, wild chicken? <laughs> if you guys don't know about the wild chicken, come back, come back. let's just say randomly a Rhode Island Red, which is a type of chicken, showed up at our house, it stayed for about four days and disappeared. A week later, the wild chicken showed up at our house and it just started living in the backwoods area from our house and our neighbor's house. And it lived behind there for probably about four months and then I decided, you know what, I want to get some chickens. So I bought my three Rhode Island Red chickens and then the wild chicken just started to come over it would hang out with my chickens it would roost somewhere else my chickens would roost in the coop did that for a little bit and then the wild chicken started roosting on the boats and chicken poop went on the boats so long story short i had to throw that wild chicken in the coop with my other chickens so i inherited someone's chicken who lives around here i don't know whose it is or where it came from but i now have it show us how the door works father nice little clamp right here we still gotta like zip tie these bad boys down right here because it kind of gets in the way oh. hey you know what um i get for hard labor this bill is going to be expensive. my hard labor bill it's your hard labor bill of the zip tie cutter <laughs> yeah i'm gonna call in the work enforcement what about the zip tie picker i'm calling code zip tie. enforcement oh yeah well Daddy just cut me. I'll remember that. All right, so we actually ran out of chicken wire. Like I said earlier in the video, we technically didn't put on the chicken wire as the instructions told us to, but it is very sturdy. We did overlap some of the sections just to give it a little bit more um, for protection. So we got to run to the store tomorrow, get more chicken wire for the ends of the chicken cage. 
Right now the sun is going down and we're gonna go ahead and make that lion's mane mushroom, which I'm super excited for. We have some melted butter in our pan. It's nice and hot. Check out these lion mane mushrooms. Now I call them lion's mane well because they look like a lion's mane. They got all this like hair like stuff on them. Super interesting. This is actually my first time actually seeing one. When we were in the farmer's market in Fort Pierce this weekend, this guy had a big booth set up with a bunch of mushrooms and I saw these and I was like, yes, I have to try them. And I'm cooking them exactly like he told me to. He said, get butter, not olive oil in a pan and slice them up. I'm gonna get a bigger knife though. First step is he said to slice them up probably around three or four times depending on the size. So here we go. I think we're gonna slice them this way. I'm just doing what he told me to do. Check that out. Look at that. Look how white and like fluffy it looks. That's weird. It don't even look edible. This is, it's like a sponge. It looks like marshmallow. It does look like marshmallow. Look, you know what this is? Mushroom. Yeah, look how cool that looks. Oh, I'm gonna move my butter so don't burn. He said you're pretty much cooking it to where like this lion's mane structure, or however you want to say it, like this lion's mane stuff gets nice and crispy. This is cool. Cut this one. And he did say they resemble scallops, which is very interesting. I'm going to save that one for Gabe. All right. Here's your butter. All right, let's put it in. I'm super excited to try this. Super light and fluffy. And we're literally just gonna what sear them. What do you feel like? Feel it. Just don't touch the pan, it's hot. Here, look, feel this one. It feels squishy like a sponge almost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna sear this maybe for two or three minutes on each side, just until they're nice and that golden color. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. Let's turn that down. This looks really good. How interesting. Actually, now they start to take the color of the lines then. Yeah. He said you just don't want them to get too flimsy. That actually looks really quick to cook. Yeah, super quick. Because you don't want them to get them too soggy. You want to take them off right before that. This was the end piece. It's a little bit thicker. Why don't you turn it off? Sure, you can turn it off. Other way. There we go. Mm. I don't know. Did I show them the butter I used? I don't remember. But this is my favorite butter to use. It's so good. All right. Oh, you know what? I'm going to try it without salt and pepper first and then one with. Super tender. You wanna try it first, Luke? Yes. All right, so we just found out that Luke loves mushrooms. Blow on it. All right, is it hot? Should be good. What do you think? So good. Say so what? You can, you can tell, it tastes like chicken, but so good. Like chicken? What? Oh my god, that is really good. It's the butter. Wow. Taste one with salt with pepper. A little bit of salt and pepper? Alright, you got it. That is amazing. Just butter. Doesn't even need salt and pepper, but just butter, salt and pepper. Ooh. That is good. I, just went in. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, it's so good. So good, right? Oh my goodness. Can I taste more like the salt and pepper? Yeah. Here, try that piece. 
I think someone's hungry. Yeah, he's hungry too. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, it's good. Here. I have my dad behind the camera. I want you to try it. Are uh, you a mushroom eater? No. <laughs> but I guess I am trying it. It's not like your typical mushroom though. I do love marshmallow. Yeah, it tastes like a chicken marshmallow. Or like a... It doesn't taste like chicken. It tastes like a butter. A buttery golden brown... Different. Different, right? But totally it's good. Different. Almost sweet, too. Yeah, that's the butter. The butter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, you guys. I'm so excited. I found this at the uh, the farmer's market. This is absolutely amazing. Oh, I, I, I can't get over it. I need to find more of these mushrooms and make them. They're incredible. But I'm going to wait for Gabe to get home. He actually went to meet up. Um, oh, oh. <clears throat> cancel my trail cameras. I got to do that. I'm still paying for a subscription and we're not even using the cameras. I'm going to wait for Gabe to get home so he can try this. I want to see his reaction. Yes. Can I try some cakes? You want to try some cake now? Yeah, after dinner. Aww. Well, there you go. And now that you are back from picking up deer meat, try the best mushroom you'll ever eat. You know what this reminds me of? What? You haven't done it with me yet, but in my early YouTube days, I did a working cow video. And we castrated some of the little bulls. What? That's exactly what it looks like when they're laying on the on the dirt. Little mm. bull nuts. But these are lion's mane mushrooms. Hmm. Pretty good. Now the first batch I put way more butter on, but this batch I kind of lightened up the butter a little bit because, see this one had kind of got a little soggy with butter. They got good texture. Yeah. What yeah, we need y'all to do is leave a comment below and hook us up with somebody that goes and hunts wild mushrooms because we need to do a video on it. I've always wanted to do it. I used to watch a show on TV. I think it's neat. It's another form of hunting. You're just only killing a mushroom. So good you job, should, babe. Yeah, you just need a little bit of sea salt and butter and whew, they are so good. They're probably one of my favorite mushrooms now. Can we talk about eating a wild chicken now? It's not even producing eggs. Off with its head, in the grease. Yeah, she only produced- Oh, one... sorry, my bad. She only produced one egg within the past two weeks. But anyways, the sun oh. is down, it's nighttime. We're getting ready to go to bed. We actually, we're gonna cook some deer meat for dinner. And uh, no pun intended. And we'll see you guys when we're ready to finish the chicken jail. It's officially official. The fluffy butt hut. Last one's a rotten egg is officially done and built. Yes, y'all chickens are now trapped. Now the fun part is I get to grow the grass back in the yard because it's looking mighty patchy. I gotta clean up the mess. And I did buy some matte Spanish moss color, moss, moss color spray paint because I think I'm gonna go ahead and spray paint all the silver. Um, the coop came with this like green chicken wire but we did run out of it so i had to buy the silver chicken wire from home depot and it looks fine but like i don't know i kind of want to color the the silver in like a green neutral color so i did a little bit of a practice run in the back and i like it so i bought two cans of this spray paint Hopefully I don't need three cans, but I'm going to try to get it done with two. And I'll spray paint this when I can let the chickens out in the yard. Spray paint this, that way it's more neutral. I bought a few plants. Not sure where I'm going to put those, but I can actually put them in the yard now because the chickens won't tear them up because chicken jail. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. This is a work in progress. I'm super excited to have this chicken coop because now we can actually do something with this side yard. There won't be a bunch of chicken poop on the patio. All this will be chicken poop less grass. All the poop's in there. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. See ya!